Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is Sub LBC here, and we are doing a quick video uh, from my Site B location. And this is actually kind of a fun place to make videos from, only because it really is kind of a, a perfect layout. You know, basically everything all enclosed. You know, you basically got everything you need. You know, vegetative facilities, you know, nice place to put nutrients, computer for entertainment, you know, drying facilities, as well as the, uh, the garden itself. An additional storage bathroom. I mean, you know, seriously, this place comes fully loaded, and um, it's going to be really nice to, you know, ev eventually expand into all these units and just run replicas, you know, of what I'm doing here. Because this is, again, you know, based on a system. But what I wanted to discuss are some of the nuances of, of what I do. We're going to be discussing a couple of things, uh, most notably nutrients, EC, PPM, stuff of that nature. And then I'm uh, also going to talk about my little, uh, you know, drawing uh, quest that I got going on here with the San Fernando Valley OG. So uh, the first thing I want to say before we really dive into nutrients and uh, PPMs and how I use nutrients, stuff of that nature, I really want to make it clear that for all you guys um, that really have questions about, you know, how to really read these things correctly, if you guys are running, you know, mostly organic or 100% pure organic regimens, uh, EC PPM is pretty much going to be useless uh, to you. So I want to make that very clear right now. I mean, there are a lot of organic uh, supplements that even in very, very small amounts that may not register at all on PPM could uh, have, you know, drastic effects on your plants. You know, sometimes positive, most of the time if used correctly, but they also could be negative. So you don't want to really rely on PPMs too much when you are dealing with organics strictly. However, for those who are running mostly synthetic blends or pure synthetic, then uh, EC and PPM can be really valuable Although I will say that given time, when you become very familiar with your nutrient regimens, um, it becomes less and less important. You know, I got to say that I do use the, uh, the pH function of my meter a lot more than my PPM, although the PPM is still useful just to kind of give me an idea of where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, as far as nutrient blends that I've used in the past, I've used all kinds. You know, obviously I'm experimenting now with the Evy 16. I've done a couple runs with the Soul Synthetics. I have a lot of experience with Botanicare, Advanced Nutrients, um, Psycho, uh, House and Garden now, starting to use a little bit more. I've uh, worked with Yellow Bottle, Nutri Plus, um, you know, Fox Farm additives. You know, there's there's pretty much, there's not too much stuff out there that I haven't really taken a, a close look at. But uh, what I do want to really stress is that, you know, you really want to pick a regimen that is going to be compatible with your style of growing um, as it applies to a particular garden or you have to run a multitude of gardens with a multitude of strains. I always preach that if you are going to be starting off, you really want to focus on you know, finding a really, really good strain and monocropping. Monocropping, you know, repeating it, um, and really try to, to masterfully work one strain. I've been doing that a lot lately with the, uh, you know, obviously the Blue Dream and the San Fernando Valley OG, and it's really paid um, a lot of dividends for me. And I'm not really too interested in, you know, doing strain switches unless, you know, I see something really, really compelling. And right now, obviously with the SFV OG, I've been working my way through a few lines. Obviously, um, with the Advanced Nutrients Connoisseur, I also use the standard Advanced Nutrients base in their line. Um, you know, house and gardens with advanced nutrients and botanic care additives, and uh, now working my way through soul synthetics and heavy 16. So it's been a huge progression, you know, obviously going from one to the next. But instead of focusing on all that wild and crazy shit, let's just go ahead and break it down to basics. Now, obviously, when we're talking nutrients, you're essentially going to have your uh, base nutrients, then you're going to have your base additives, and then secondary additives, essentially how I kind of like to look at it. Um, when I talk about base nutrients, that is very simple. You know, in this case, with heavy 16, you have your a and B. This is a, a very, very straightforward two-part uh, base nutrient formula. Um, there are one parts though, such as the Soul Synthetics Bloom. You know, this does not have a part A and a part B. It's just one product that has all things inclusive. And then um, you'll have also one parts for veg nutrients, such as Botanicare's Pure Bloom Pro. And um, they all generally work pretty much the same. Although I will say that in the realm of blooming, I have been, uh, you know, lately a lot less compelled by one part base nutrient products, you know, such as the Botanic Cure Pure Blend Pro, the, uh, the Soul Synthetics Bloom, I think they work all right, uh, but they have some major drawbacks versus, you know, at least the two parts that I've used. And so far, the ones that I've really been impressed with um, would obviously be the, the, the House and Garden Cocos AB, the Heavy 16 so far, and uh, Psycho, you know, makes an excellent, excellent base in my opinion. But with all that stuff set aside, you know, generally most nutrient regimens are designed to be used in equal parts. And as far as the, uh, the PPM part of it is concerned, um, I don't think it's necessarily a good idea to look at PPMs initially, but really to get an idea of what the suggested application rates should be, you know, given the, uh, the recommendations of the manufacturer. You know, here with Heavy 16, they make it really easy. You know, early bud, eight to 10 mils, 
mid bud 10 to 12, late bud 12 to 15. Now, a good strategy that I like to use is, is that if you are planning on using a lot of additives, you know, not only your base additives, but also a lot of secondary additives, that you generally always want to be looking at the most, you know, minimal dose. That's generally where you want to be. And that's pretty much how I use this stuff. You know, eight milliliters per gallon, um, mixed at a 50 gallon res, you know, that's basically 400 milliliters per reservoir, but the reservoir actually does fill up to 55 gallons. So I do have a built-in extra five gallons of buffer and you do need that, you know, again, you know, with the reservoir, as you're pumping a ton of air through it, you are going to lose some water due to evaporation. You want to have a lot of extra water in there to make sure that your PPMs don't spike and fluctuate too high, because if they do, that could, you know, be potentially hazardous for your plants. So um, that is pretty much my strategy when dealing with two-part bases. You know, one-part bases, the same thing. You know, generally will not use more than the min min minimum recommended amount um, for that base nutrient, because I, I do like to use a lot of additives. Now, for most nutrient lines, this does not include all nutrient lines, but most nutrient lines will comprise of what I like to call base additives. And uh, stuff of, th of this nature would be like your Big Bud and your Overdrive. You know, this is clearly a product that you want to use for bud building, and it works really, really well. Um, I use it at 2 milliliters per liter, again, 4 milliliters per gallon, uh, 400 milliliters per reservoir. Um, both the Big Bud and the Overdrive, you know, use at the exact same rate, but obviously use them at different times. Um, there's also a product from Advanced Nutrients called Bud Igniter, which I avoid at all costs. Uh, I find it to be um, completely overpriced into the realm of insanity and offers, you know, little to no benefit, you know, for that investment. However, with Big Bud and Overdrive, these are pretty much tried and true. Um, I've used a lot of products like these, but these are always readily available, and I think they're priced well enough to be used consistently, and I like consistency. I find something that I like. I will generally you know, tend to use it more. Um, although I'm always open to use other things, but I don't want to be doing all kinds of weird special orders through the hydro shops to get my hands on cer certain things, you know, such as the Psycho Swell and, and Potash. So um, yeah, you know, these are really, really good examples of base additives. Another base additive would be something like this. Um, now this is kind of a, an odd example. You know, a better example of a more straightforward base additive would be something like Liquid Karma. You know, this is obviously a biocatalyst um, used exclusively for not only aiding um, any kind of live beneficials that you have in your medium, but also to really assist your root system in nutrient delivery. That is really the core, and, and Liquid Karma is one of the best products in this range. Although Heavy 16 has really taken it a step above and actually combines a lot of elements that you'll find in sweeteners, you know, they throw in some kelp extracts and whatnot, um, as well as your you know standard humic acids that you'll find in most biocatalysts that you'll find in Liquid Karma. So, you know, this is kind of like a, uh, a very, you know, all-inclusive type product. And so far, my results with this have been really, really good. And generally speaking, you know, when you're dealing with biocatalysts, you'll be able to know them right away because they're always going to have some kind of, you know, humic acid extract or whatnot. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, oh, sorry, I got the wrong, got two lenses here on my 3D camera. But uh, yeah, you will always see that and it will generally always have a, a very low NPK ratio, although this is not always the case. You know, obviously, Soul Synthetics creates a product called Infinity, um, which is a biocatalyst, but is also um, kind of a phosphorus booster. You know, very, uh, you know, bloom-centric type biocatalyst. You know, companies are always trying to do weird things. But, you know, obviously, biocatalysts such as Prime Enhancer or Liquid Karma, as well as Overdrive and Big Bud would really make up, you know, what I would call your, uh, your base additives. You know, anyone who's growing cannabis will generally go through this progression. Now, you do have other additives which are kind of like patchwork, you know, such as uh, CalMag Plus. You might want to consider this a base additive as well because a lot of products, or, I'm sorry, a lot of plant uh, phenos do need CalMag at some point, although, you know, a lot of these new uh, base nutrients are including a lot of calcium and magnesium in them, such as the one part uh, CNS17 from Botanicare and many others. But uh, for those who need an extra boost, obviously CalMag Plus is generally a good thing to have in your regimen. So now we get into secondary additives, you know, more specialty stuff. So a good example of that would be if we're talking Bloom, you know, obviously the uh, the Sweet Raw and Floralicious Plus. Now these products both generally do about the same thing. Um, so given that, if you're going to use both at the same time, you want to use them in reduced dosages. So with Floralicious Plus, you know, one milliliter per gallon gets it done. You know, 50 milliliters for the 55 gallon reservoir Sweet Raw. Um, I don't uh, use it at more than 10 milliliters per gallon, and that's pretty much for all applications. And to be quite honest with you, um, there's no nutrient that I will use in a 50 gallon reservoir that requires more than 500 milliliters. Even if it recommends that I do so, I generally will not, because I'm just running so many other things. And you got to keep in mind that uh, you know when you are 
running all these exotic additives and whatnot, you do have to keep in mind not to run too crazy on PPMs because you could es essentially you know, surpass the PPM shelf for what your water can actually sustain given the water quality and it could you know, more or less render your nutrient mix ineffective. So you know, always keep that in line, keep your mixtures low if you're gonna be you know, stacking products. Um, other things that you could consider a specialty additive would be like hydrazine. You know, this is a straightforward enzyme basically designed to you know, break up dead and dying root matter to keep things really, really clean in the root zone so your root, uh, you know, root zone can perform at optimal efficiency. Um, there are other things that you can use to try to correct nutrient imbalances, you know, such as the NutriPlus Green. Uh, another product like NutriPlus Green would be like Advanced Nutrients Revive or the, uh, the Doctor Repair from Psycho. Okay? Now you can get even more exotic, obviously, with straight up nitrogen boosters, such as the Soul Synthetics Grow N, which is a, a very, very high concentrate, 800, so obviously very, very high ratio there on the nitrogen. And uh, this is obviously used in vegetative growth. You want to get really, really robust, very fast vegetative growth. The, uh, the addition of Grow N can really help a lot, as well as the amino aid, which you'll notice is also very rich in nitrogen, uh, but also contains a lot of very beneficial amino acids, which again, it all comes down to nutrient uptake and just you know allowing the plants to use as much of the light energy to convert that into carbohydrates, pure energy to grow and grow and get as big as possible. So now for new stuff that I've been trying recently um, to try to even make things even more better for my plants is the addition of things like SM90, you know, essentially a wetting agent that you apply in the uh, the root area to again, you know, accelerate the uh, the nutrient uptake, you know, the transition uh, between the soil and you know the, the roots themselves, just trying to get liquids into the plant can, you know, liquid rich nutrients into the plant as efficiently as possible. That is pretty much, you know, the end all goal. But you don't need very much of this stuff, guys. You know, only roughly uh, one to two milliliters. Generally, two milliliters per uh, per gallon will get it done. So only a uh, hundred milliliters for a whole reservoir. So, you know, one good thing about the SM90 is, although it is expensive, it does uh, go a long way. Now, I want to do mention that I do not use reverse osmosis water for my system. You know, everything is all tied in through a, a hydrologic system that's contain, uh, connected to a small boy filter and everything's got their own individual switch valve with their own little you know toilet bowl float valve so that way if I run out of res water just flip the switch and all of my uh, reservoirs auto refill. Um, I think that res uh, reverse osmosis water is obviously really really good but it's incredibly wasteful and water is expensive here in uh, you, know, you know Los Angeles County and I really don't want to waste a lot of water you know with these crazy you know, 10 to as many as 20 to 1 ratios of water that you just have to get rid of in order to create good quality RO, I'm just not really into it. So we just do normal two-step filtering, and then that's basically that. But the reason why I mention this is because you want to make sure that if you are not running RO water, um, that you could run into complications with certain nutrient lines, um, especially with uh, calcium and magnesium lockout. So do keep that in mind. If you run into that problem, you know, you may more likely have to flush the plants and uh, maybe make some adjustments, adjustments to your regimen. But you can see, you know, after I mix all these up, and right now I am running a, uh, actually let's just go over the mix real quick. I'm running Pure Blend Pro uh, at 10 milliliters per gallon. I'm also using the original Pure Blend from Botanicare at the same rate. I mix them at a one-to-one -one rate. And I really love this stuff. You know, I like to go mostly organic in the early goings, you know, uh, vegetative while in the flowering room as well as early flowering. Because when you do spike um, the, uh, the synthetics and heavy metals and, you know, minerals and stuff like that, it makes it more difficult for the, you know, the living organisms that you introduce into the environment, such as the great white, to thrive. So I like to keep things as organic as possible. So obviously running, a, you know, a one-to-one ratio of Pure Blend Pro and original Pure Blend is a good way to do that. Um, there are some rock phosphates uh, present in the uh, Pure Blend Pro, but not enough to really slow things down. Now to further boost beneficials, also throw in some liquid carboload. This is also something that I use in early flowering as well, up until about the big bud phase. You know, so I'm basically running that at a 200 milliliters. I think that's a, what is that? Um, four milliliters per gallon, basically. These are each at uh, 10 milliliters per gallon, so 500 milliliters each for the entire reservoir. Liquid Karma is always standard at 10 milliliters uh, per gallon, you know, so 500 milliliters for the entire reservoir. And I will use that for veg and obviously transition over to the Prime Enhancer when we get into bloom. And then, um, you know, run some SM90, obviously, is a good thing. Um, always a good idea to run enzymes with transplants. That um, the uh, rate for hydrozyme, I always do at 5 milliliters per gallon or 250 milliliters for a 50 gallon reservoir. And then I'll just tap it off here with just a, a little bit of grow end, maybe between 50 to 100 milliliters for a 50 gallon reservoir. And then just a slightly higher dose of CalMag 
than the minimum, which is five milliliters per gallon. So I do 300 milliliters for a 50 gallon reservoir, and then I also do uh, a little bit less than that for the amino acids. So you can see, guys, that I'm running a lot of stuff in this uh, regimen, but the PPMs are actually not that crazily out of control. You know, keep in mind, guys, that I am running, you know, filtered water, so my starting PPMs are not really that terribly great. You know, somewhere probably between like 150 and 200, and then my PPMs are peaking out here at uh, 1240, and uh, this mix here is probably about two days old or so. So we've even evaporated some water off, you know, to reach this 1240. So this is about as high as it ever gets, and that's generally about as high as it should ever get. You know, pH right now is riding at 6.1, but or 6.0, I guess. I'm not looking to adjust it though, because I'm not watering currently. But uh, yeah, guys, pretty hunky-dory and straightforward. Now, uh, before we get off the subject of nutrients and PPM, I do want to say that for you guys out there that are very, very serious, I highly recommend that you only use Blue Lab pH meters. Uh, I've used so many different kinds of pH meters, you know, the best, from Hannah and Milwaukee and Oakton and all kinds. Um, you will not find a better pH meter than those made by Blue Lab. I know that they're really, really expensive and uh, it's a huge investment, but seriously guys, for anyone that's into you know, cannabis growing, hydroponic or otherwise, any kind of reliance on pH especially, or PPM, you know, such as the nature of this video, you really need to get yourself a Blue Lab, just like this one. Their uh, combo meter is bomb. They, they have a couple other model um, variations that are newer, I guess, that they've updated this. I have not tested those out firsthand yet, but I have no doubt that the quality is excellent. But you know, these are my favorite meters. They just absolutely rock. So now, guys, to finish up the video, we're uh, basically just going to be uh, taking a look at the SFV OG harvest under a fluorescent light. And uh, the reason why I'm really adding this in here is because uh, it looks like the drying is a little bit behind schedule. As it turns out, I somewhat underestimated the, uh, you know, the exhaust capability of the 4-inch inline fan. You know, it seems that my 8-inch boosters do actually do significantly more air pull. You know, I thought that they probably wouldn't deal with negative pressure as well, and the 4-inch might. But uh, as it stands, you know, we were reaching seventh day, and uh, you know, a lot of this stuff is still uh, kind of not there yet. So, stepping up the fan speed a little bit, I think that at this point we're running about three quarters, maybe 80% strength, and uh, hopefully by tomorrow we'll be good to go. We've been running at that new output at about four, four about I should say, almost 24 hours now, and it did make a significant difference. And it's still obviously excellent. You know, I've been gripping my hands, you know, just getting a feel for it. And uh, one great sign is that if you, you know, your hands get real sticky. After just handling a couple buds, then you know there's enough oils in there to really preserve that rocky, you know, bomb texture. And they don't appear to be drying too quickly, but obviously I am keeping a close eye on it. But I think that at this current fan speed, by tomorrow we should be able to easily start working on a, you know a lot of these basket buds, which are you know pretty much at the dry point right now. And then uh, the day after that, we'll finally be able to break into you know a lot of these uh, these bigger buds here, guys. But you can see you know from the uh, the previous video that this stuff has definitely shrunk a lot. And you can expect to lose, you know, no less than, you know, gosh, I don't know, maybe 70% of the uh, wet weight, maybe more, you know, in drying, especially if you remove a lot of the uh, fan leaf materials. So, yeah, you know, obviously they shrink up quite a bit, but really, really, really looking forward to uh, the results of the uh, SFBOG grow with this Heavy 16 line. Because like I said, I was really impressed with the, uh, the Heavy 16. Its performance in flower with this strain was pretty off the hook. Now, uh, as far as the SFVs that are on deck, you know, obviously these plants now have been transplanted for just a couple of days now, I think, not even two days. And we are running a 24 hour uh, lighting regimen, 600 watts, 2400 watts total. And uh, you see the plants just look great. You know, no complaints, no droopiness, nothing like that. Although I do want to stress that it is generally important that if you're doing transplants like this under 24 hour lighting schedules, you do want to come in there and make sure to add a little bit of fresh water, or not fresh, I guess nutrient water, or, you know, just make sure to water the plants basically right here in this zone because uh, even though the rest of the, the cocoa could be really, really wet, um, if this top layer dries out, sometimes the, uh, you know, the rock wool won't leach all the moisture. You want to make sure to give it a little bit of a boost just to make sure the plants don't dry out because you don't want to be stressing them out you know, at this phase in their growth. You, know, you want them basically just hitting it hard right out of the gates, especially in veg. And then uh, once they reach the appropriate size, we'll go ahead and step up the wattage, put them in the flower, and then uh, start laying down this trellis. And uh, yeah, I, I think that we're going to be hitting some uh, some really excellent results uh, next time when this one finishes. So that is pretty much it, guys, for this video update. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, probably see you guys next update will be after the SFVOG is done. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at our bud comparisons. So uh, yeah, guys, see you then.